Welcome to the Purpose Chasers Podcast, a podcast designed to provide insights into personal development, spirituality, recovery, entrepreneurship, with the ultimate goal of empowering you to create an unstoppable mindset so that you can break free from mediocrity and live extraordinarily. If you want to take your personal development further, please feel free to head over to my website, markcrandall.net, and download your free sneak peek of my new book, Embrace Your Past, Win Your Future. Future. I look forward to seeing you in future episodes, but until then, enjoy this one. Welcome back everyone to this episode of the Purpose Chasers podcast. I have a dear friend of mine, Chantel Turner, and I met her through, I don't even remember where I met you, ClickFunnels Facebook group maybe, and she, she made a comment about some, some work that she was doing with children with family members or parents of children with disabilities. And um, as all of you know, I mean, my sister has cerebral palsy. So it is a, it's a, a heart space of mine. And the, the post that she made really, really intrigued me. And then I learned that Chantel had started a community for parents that had children with disabilities and it's called Stronger Mommy. And I've been trying to get her on, almost had to cancel this interview due to a doctor's appointment, but we're making it happen. But I've been trying to get her on to discuss her path, her journey and how she started Stronger Mommy. She's an amazing human being. So strap in for this episode. Chantal, thank you so much for coming on the Purpose Chasers podcast. Thanks for having me, Mark. I'm excited to be here. So I guess we'll start at the beginning, right? I would love to hear, hear your story and, and obviously it centers, you know, centers around your little one. How did you come to, I mean, obviously I know how you came to, you know, give birth to a child with a disability. Like that's a, you know, that's just out there, but how did you come to this, you know, passion project or this, you know, purpose, this calling of empowering other parents? Yeah. So, um, we actually, I was very fortunate. We had a a really like good pregnancy. Everything was normal. Our baby was healthy. Um, first child. And then, um, when I went into labor, I was in a lot of pain. Um, and my water had broken and they ended up doing an emergency C-section because every time I would have a contraction, my daughter's heart rate would stop. And so they were concerned. So they did this emergency C-section and they got her out and they said she was great. They said there was nothing wrong. They didn't know what was going on, but she was fine. And they gave her to us. Um, we were blissfully happy new parents for a couple of hours in that, you know, room. Um, they put you in like the maternity room and all of that. And our family was there, but she was having trouble breastfeeding, which is totally normal for a brand new mom, new baby. Um, her temperature was a little bit low. Her glucose was low. So they took her to the nursery to warm her up, to give her some, some food, all of that. And during that time, our doctor did what they call rounds. So the doctor went and visited the babies. They do that when they're born. Um, So the pediatrician did his rounds. He looked at her and he said, I don't know what's wrong, but something is wrong with this baby and she needs to go up to the NICU. And within about 20 minutes of her being up in the NICU, she actually had two apneic episodes that stopped her breathing. So they were seizures that stopped her breathing. She turned blue. Thank God she was in the NICU. They revived her right away. So we were very fortunate that he had known something was going on and had sent her up there. Um, But then it was this mad dash to figure out what was going on with her. And so uh, it was several days of tests, EEG, uh, CT, and eventually an MRI. And it was determined that she had had a stroke in utero during birth. So either her labor caused... Uh, sorry, my labor caused her to have the stroke or her stroke caused me to go into labor. But um, either way, that's kind of what started our journey. And we spent a total of 11 days in the hospital. We were given tons of paperwork and talked to by social workers and also trying to figure out how to be new parents and everything that was going on. And it was this whirlwind. And we had thought that the social workers had said that they were applying for some state help and things like that for her, um, that they were you know, helping us get services and all of that. And we were just under so much pressure trying to figure out how just to be parents to survive everything that was going on. Um, it was about six months down the road that I kind of woke up and realized we're not getting anything. I don't think anybody applied for anything for us. And so I kind of went into fix it mode. I'm a, I'm a problem solver. And I was like, okay, I've got a problem. We've got this mountain of medical bills now, even though I had good insurance. Um, it just doesn't cover all of that. 
and I've got to figure out how to get these services. I don't even know what they were. <laughs> they said they were applying for. So I just went to work. I, I me and Google became really good friends and um, got down and dirty to it. Started Googling, started talking with her doctors and all of that and started to get her these resources and services and support that she needed. Um, at the same time, I really like as a new mom, especially as a mom of a child with special needs, I didn't know anybody else that had a kid with special needs. So I didn't know anybody that had a kid with cerebral palsy, which was her diagnosis or epilepsy. Um, I, I just, I'd never known anybody with that. And so I was on an Island just trying to do everything that I could and survive. And I would have people constantly say, you're doing such an amazing job for your kid. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's my kid. Like I have to, that's what parents do. And it wasn't until we finally started to get these services and support um, until she was probably about two or three years old when uh, the coordinator at the time, they give you a coordinator to help with that, came to, a, came to a meeting and I was fighting with her to get my daughter some things that she needed. This is common for parents who have kids with special needs. It is a battle day in and day out to get what you need for your kid. It shouldn't be, but it is. And we were in this battle. I was fighting with her. I won. And she said to me, you know, you should really sit on our board and fight for other kids who have parents or, you know, other parents and their kids with special needs. And at first I'm like, how dare you? Right? Like I have a full-time job. I'm trying to care for my kid. My husband travels 80% of the year. I'm also trying to make some kind of extra income on the side because we have all of these bills. And you think that I have time to sit on your board and do your job is kind of how I felt. The more <laughs> I thought about it, right? <laughs> I really wanted to, to say that, but the more I thought about it, I'm like, maybe she's right. I do, like, I have been solving this problem for myself. Maybe there are other parents who need this help. But then you never know what your superpower is. Like, so I kind of thought also, well, these other parents, they must know all the things that I know. They must be getting all of these resources. So I started to join these support communities online for parents who had kids with special needs. And what I found out was that so many of them didn't know about all of the different resources available that I had found out. So I would see posts from parents that talked about how they were just drowning and they just needed five minutes of sanity. And I would ask, well, aren't you getting respite care? And the response I would get is, what is respite care? I would say, aren't you getting services and support from your state? And they would say, no, I can't because my income's too high. But my response was, in most states, it's based on your child's income, not yours. And all of a sudden, I realized there were so many things that these parents just didn't know or they had been given bad information or somebody had, had told them they couldn't get something that they totally could have. And so I didn't want to just kind of try and solve something here and there in somebody else's forum. I said, you know what? I am going to do something about this. And so I founded Stronger Mommy with the, with the overlying purpose of helping parents who have children with special needs to get the resources, services, support, and community that they need. And through that, I've been able to help them do that. I've been able to share with them all of these amazing resources. And it's just kind of grown into this great vision. Um, but that's really kind of how it all got started was totally by accident. <laughs> Your story, I, and then this is absolutely the reason why I wanted to have you on the podcast. It's because your story is just so powerful in the sense that, in, and so what I think about is in our world, in our day and age, we get told that we can or can't do certain things. And then that becomes our reality and that becomes our truth. But there is a rare breed of individuals that exist, you, myself, other individuals that are in our circles that say, yeah, I don't really believe that. L let's make that happen. Like, I don't believe that you can't do that. And I don't believe that that's a truth. And I think about, and, it, and it's such a far stretch, but I think about when, you know, when I first got out of prison and they told me that I couldn't vote and then I wanted to vote, there was an election that I was passionate about, found out that I could vote, that that was made up. And then I decided that I wanted to, I wanted to get a job working for the state and was told that I couldn't get a job working for the state. And I interviewed and got hired. And so it's just a prime example of the same thing that went on, that was going on with you and within the, you know, the community of parents with special needs. I was using the, the language of disability earlier because I watched this video of this uh, blind autistic man and they had, it was, uh, he was on, what was it, American Idol or something. And he sat America's down. Got and, talent. Yeah, America's Got Talent. And in the post, it said um, dis and they had dis crossed out and it said ability. And it was just, I just think about it. So individuals that are against the grain, so to speak, that are just kind of out there as different, 
my experience is those individuals have the potential to create the most substantial change in our society. And you're one of them. So long rant. I actually use different abilities all the time. So I talk about like all of us, right? Whether, whether you have special needs or not, um, we have different abilities. You have different abilities than I have. You know, my daughter has more love and, and like excitement and caring for her than most humans will ever have in their lifetime. And she's five right? Like she has different abilities. There are children with autism that can do insanely amazing, intelligent things that we can't do. Like our brains are just not wired to think that up. And so we, we look at them and say they're different or society says that they have a disability, meaning that they're not able to do the things that we're able to do. But the truth is we're not able to do the things that they're able to do that are also so amazing. And so we're all just different. And I think that's the direction that society is moving. But I do, I say different abilities a lot. (laughs) And for those of you listening, I actually use that wording. I'm very uh, up to speed on, on what is politically correct, if you will. I mean, I am a social worker, but I'd use that language to see if Chantel was going to correct me. And if we weren't on this episode, I have a feeling that she would have, but she didn't. And she just, she just, um, reiterated and overemphasized special needs multiple times that she was talking. So Chantal, you know, I, as a foster child and, you know, watching what my foster mother went through with the struggle with my sister who had, you know, was diagnosed with cerebral palsy and just watching what she went through. That's why I became so like, I was like, I have to know this woman right? Because I watched what my mom went through and I know how strong of a, of an individual she is. She's one of the strongest women I know. Right. And so there's, there's this fire that gets lit and it was with her and I see it within you. So how has your accidental creation of stronger mommy in this community grown? Like what, and we're going to get into some other projects that Chantel's working on now, but how is that like, Give me, I, I just kind of want to hear some statistics. What does that look like? I would love to hear some testimonials of things that have transpired within this. And it's a Facebook group, correct? Yeah. So, well, so I always say like, <laughs> kind of funny. I was not a great human prior to having my daughter. Now I wasn't a bad human. I didn't commit crimes. I didn't hurt anybody. Right. Like I wasn't a bad person, but I was, Wait, that makes people bad. bad. Well, you know, it's you frowned upon to like, hurt others and commit crimes. Like, it, I think society kind of frowns upon it. So I wasn't, I wasn't out there doing like malicious things. I just was very self-centered and very self-involved. And, and prior to having my daughter, I focused a lot on how anything that I was doing was going to benefit me. So prior to having my daughter, if we were having this podcast, my focus would have been how does me going on your podcast benefit me? right? That was just the way that my mind was wired at that time. And after having my daughter, I don't know entirely what caused the shift, whether I I mean, I'm sure it was a combination of all of it. But what shifted for me was I became a person who wanted to positively impact others. And I stopped thinking about how does something positively impact me and changed it to how can I benefit somebody else? So now, you know, with the founding of Stronger Mommy and all of that, it was with the intent of not how can I do something for me. I was already doing all the things I needed, but I did it because I wanted to help other parents because I wanted to impact somebody else's life in a positive way. And so the best part about that is that I do get these messages. And I, so I I do have a private group of about 3000 parents who have children with special needs. Um, and then I've also, you know, I've got a podcast and website and, um, a book is coming and all sorts of things. But what's amazing is that that group, that community, stronger mommies, it truly has become a tribe of of parents who are going through this journey. And I get these messages out of the blue all the time that tell me how much I positively impact their lives, how much that community has made a positive impact on their lives. I had a mom reach out and say that within 10 minutes of being a part of Stronger Mommies, the online community, she made more friends than she's made in the last 10 years, that she's felt more connected to other people that truly understand what she's going for. And it's become this platform Because we don't want to be different. We don't want to segregate ourselves as parents who have kids with special needs versus, you know, mainstream neurotypical parents, but we are, and there is still a bunch of stigma out there. 
And there are times when a neuro, neurotypical parent does not understand what it is that we're going through when we have a child with special needs. And so together inside this community, we can celebrate what to someone else might even not seem like a milestone, but we can celebrate something that to us is huge. And you can vent about something that seems absolutely crazy and have other people rally around you and say, oh my God, I'm going through that same thing. I'm so glad you posted about it. And all of a sudden you feel like, wow, I'm not on this island. There are other people on this journey with me who get what I'm going through, who truly care about me, who truly care about my child. And it's just become this like safe haven. And so for me, that's insanely fulfilling to know that even though the community fulfills each other, that I, I created that community and I had a hand in helping those people find each other and helping them find a space and a place that they belong. That is, I mean, just, it's, it's epic, right? And, and I really, my experience in business is that the most successful businesses start from the same way that you're starting this. Right, you find something that, that you find something that you're passionate about that there's a need for, and then you go into it as you have. What's the name of your podcast? The Stronger Mommy Podcast. Super creative over here, by the way. <laughs> stronger, stronger Mommy Podcast. Oh, well, it's really good branding. <laughs> <laughs> I I have nailed the branding aspect of Stronger Mommy. So yeah, this is coming up for me. Do you feel like there is a there is a need for a community for fathers? And I'm asking that question because I'm about to be a father, right? And I'm finding that like, I can't tell my wife that I have no clue what I'm doing. So I'm just like pretending that I like this has been taught to me, but it really hasn't. So the only thing that's been taught to me is, is support my wife, right? Do you so we, do, we do take um, fathers into our community as well. It tends in a lot of situations, it tends to be the mom that is doing the majority of the caring for the child, especially. So my husband is extremely involved with our daughter. He is very supportive. He's very hands-on, um, but he also travels for work. He's, he's the main breadwinner for our household. And um, so it does a lot of the time fall on, onto my shoulders for scheduling, for getting to and from appointments and all of that. Um, he's so helpful. But in, in a lot of cases, it is the mom that is doing the majority of those things. So it became Stronger Mommy because you have to identify with the majority. You have to create that brand. Um, you don't want to be for everyone, unfortunately. It's just when you're for everyone, you're actually for no one. And so we had to create that identity and that's what it became. We do have dads that come in. I think it would be amazing to have a dad-only support community and a dad-only support group because there are so many dads that are going through that. But I will tell you that no new parent knows what they're doing and that there is no handbook that comes with your kids. Um, we're all just trying to figure it out. I am certain that your wife feels the same way that you do, which is like, I'm just pretending that I know how to be a mom, but I'm feeling a little lost over here. And like, it's, oh my gosh, it just got real. We're going to have this kid in a couple weeks. So, um, <laughs> we all go through that. And even, you know, she's five and there are still times when I'm like, uh, there are days where I feel like a total failure. There are days where I, I kick myself because I'm like, I did not react to that situation, right? I've yelled at my kid. I call it a parent tantrum. Every single parent has thrown one. I guarantee it. That's when um, your kid started it, right? I always, she started it, <laughs> but I've slammed her door. I've yelled like, it is what it is. We're human. None of us know what we're doing. They push us way past our breaking point. Um, and, as, and, and thank God we love them because that's the only thing that, that keeps me sane and keeps me on the right side of, of being a good parent. Um, is that bond and is that love? But really, we're all just like kind of winging it here. So you're not alone. Oh, man, I'm excited. I've had a lot of, I can only imagine within the special needs community, the or being in the special needs community or having a child with special needs, the, the stigma and or the opinions of others is kind of escalated, right? So it's, it's, there's, there's a lot more of them would be my guess. And because I've had, and I'm saying that due to the fact that I've had so many individuals say to me, Oh, you're never going to sleep. You better go take a job because you're not going to be able to work. And like all of these things. And what I just started saying was like, don't put your voodoo on me. Like, don't like, don't bring that into my world. Right. I'm excited about this. Like we, we had been trying for five years. Like, don't, don't bring that to me. Is that, do you experience that or does your community experience that? I think that there's a lot of 
different opinions out there, right? So some people think and say like, I don't know how you do it, right? Like, and, and a lot of people in, within my community get offended by that. I'm not an easily offended person, so it just personally doesn't offend me. Um, but they also take it the wrong way. So when somebody's like, oh my God, you're such an amazing mom, I don't know how you do it. And a lot of them are like, well, I didn't have a choice, right? None of us stood up and were like, hey, I'd love for my child to have challenges when she's born. Let's, let's enjoy that journey, right? Like you don't, you don't choose that, but she's my child. Of course, I'm going to do absolutely everything that I can for her. Um, but I get where it comes from because it is like, even though I'm parenting a child with special needs and going through all of it, there are days when I'm like, I don't know how that mom's doing it. I don't know how a mom of six mainstream kids does it. Like, why, how did you make six? I struggle with one. So I think we all struggle to go through that journey on in our own way. And when we look at something from an outside perspective, it looks hard, but once you're in it, you figure it out. And so the opposite of that is that I have, um, I have people that, that think that I'm like a freaking saint, right? Like even, even one of my best friends, when she and I first met, um, she was like, wow, you have a child with special needs. You're such an amazing mom. She put me on this pedestal in her mind that I was some kind of angel that was just such an amazing, like I was better than she was. And I was so amazing because I was caring for this child with special needs until one day she saw my daughter have a tantrum, totally act out. And I flipped my lid and yelled. And all of a sudden my friend Heather goes, you're real. You're a real person. Like you, you are not perfect. And I, and that's true. None of us are perfect. And I think society tries to, to, to put us on this pedestal um, or they try to, to throw us under the bus and say like, you know, maybe you're not doing the best job. And it comes 100% from a lack of understanding. So all the time I try to tell people like, if that person in the grocery store is staring at you because your child's having a meltdown, say something, engage them in conversation and be like, I know it's crazy. I'm sorry. I had to get groceries. Like I had no choice she has autism or, you know, she has cerebral palsy and this is just a reaction. Nine times out of 10, that person that's staring, they're not meaning to judge you. It comes because they don't understand. So I really, in everything that I do with Stronger Mommy, I focus on helping people understand. I've had, I had a mom who was talking about um, how she was, you know, at McDonald's, I think, and her child is five and still in a stroller because she's a flight risk. And if she doesn't keep her in a stroller, that child will run away and she can't like function out in the world if her child's constantly running away and she was getting a stare from the woman behind her. And I said, so turn around, smile at that woman and make a joke about how ridiculous it is that you have to keep your child in a stroller. But man, should that lady be grateful because otherwise it would be chaos inside the McDonald's. And that's just how I approach things. And all of a sudden when you can make light of a situation and you can joke about it and you can allow that person to not feel awkward and, and to come into your world, it totally changes the perspective and you're able to have an open conversation and they're able to then take that information that they gained from you and be better the next time and how they react to that situation. So I think like there are those societal norms and the way that people look at every, every situation, but you can't judge anything from the outside. I mean, I always said before I had kids and you've probably felt this way, right? You have somebody that has kids and they complain to you about how their child is still sleeping in their bed and it's ridiculous that their kid now sleeps in their bed with them and you're like, well, you started it. Like, why'd you ever let your kid sleep in your bed with you? You caused that problem, right? Okay, well, so I was a judgmental person until I made a kid and at two o'clock in the morning after you've been up night after night after night and you are exhausted, finally you're like, fine, just sleep in my bed if we can both sleep. And then you create that situation for yourself. And all of a sudden you're like, I, I get it. I get, I get why you let your kids sleep in your bed. And so I think we all just can't, we can't judge your situation until we're living in it for anyone. It's easy to do. I mean, I see these uh, iPad parents out there, right? And it's like, they would, they would much rather just throw an iPad at their child versus then engage with them as if they're a, you know, an, in an attempt to nurture a human and, and, and raise wait. a human. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> we've we've already had we've already had the conversation. But I want to transition here because you are one of the I'm trying to think of how to word this. For those of you listening, Chantel is a hustler. And what I mean by that is she's not selling snake oil, but she's got her hands in a lot of things. And I really I want to highlight this on the episode for those, you know, moms out there, for those dads out there, for anyone listening. We live in a day and age in which I don't believe that anyone should be broke. I just don't believe it. We have access, like you could start a podcast, get a following, like 
have coaching clients. Like we just live, I just got goosebumps when I said that because I saw Chantel perk up. Like this is her, this is her jam. But like we just live in it in a time in which no one should be broke. There's so much opportunity. I mean, whatever that is. I mean, you could be doing coaching, consulting, you could start a podcast. You there's a million different, you know, multi-level marketing things out there that you could get into. I would recommend finding a product that you back. But regardless, Chantel, when you had the bills piling up and you were seeking to make money, like what did you do? And I'm I'm setting her up. She's like ready to come out the gates because she's she's an absolute hustler. Like I watched her. I got to go, you know, I got to meet her at Funnel Hacker Live, uh, which is the Click Funnels conference. And she's just, I mean, I watch her on Facebook. She is all over the road. I just gave you five or six different ins, Chantel. So take it away. Yeah. So um, when we first, well, before we had my daughter, we, um, I, you know, I had a great job, a corporate job. I was working in a hotel. My husband had a, a great corporate job as well. Um, that great insurance and those great corporate jobs did not cover all the bills. So I very quickly had to figure out how I was going to pay all of these extra bills. Um, I am a problem solver, not an excuse maker. So for those of you out there, this is going to be a little bit like, let's be honest. Okay. You need to have a look in the mirror and are you somebody that every time something comes along, you make an excuse as to why you can't, or are you somebody that looks at it and says, how can I? So before I dive in, I will say this, my daughter actually taught me this. And so, um, she, a lot of like, she doesn't say it as much anymore. Um, but she, she said for a long time, she would say not mommy, can I have my iPad? She would say, why am I not having my iPad? Right. Just on her own. That's how she would say it. Now she gets almost everything right in the English language. She's not a kid that mixes things up. A lot of kids do, but specifically that she would say, why am I not in, instead of, can I have, and I think we need to look at the world and say, why am I not? Like, why am I not having absolutely everything that I want in my life? Why am I not, you know, at the, at the income level or the success level or the freedom level that I want? Not, can I have that? Because I think that's the wrong question. And so if you're out there and, and look at your life, have an introspective for a minute and, and take a moment to say, am I somebody that every time there's a bump in the road, I make an excuse why I can't get over it? Or am I somebody that says, I don't care how many bumps in the road there are. I see the end destination and I'm going for it. I'm a person that solves problems. And so that's what I did. I had a problem. I had a financial deficit. I needed to figure it out. I couldn't get a second job because my daughter was already going to daycare during the time that I was working. My husband travels for work. I couldn't leave my daughter in daycare 24 hours a day. So I had to figure out how was I going to earn an income on the side from home. I had a three hour round trip commute every day. Maybe I could do something while I was in my car, right? There's so much you can do. And so for me, it was MLM. It was that network marketing that I found. I found a product that I loved and I started to promote that. And I was doing phone calls while I was in the car. Um, anytime I wasn't on the phone, I would listen to all sorts of different audiobooks, just increasing my intelligence, increasing um, my mental capacity, learning. And then I was out there sharing with people and talking to people. And I did it the hard way, the traditional hard like network marketing way, but I did it all over the internet. I didn't necessarily talk to all my friends and family. I connected with people I'd never met in, you know, in chat rooms and um, Facebook groups and all of that. And I built this, this business online that started generating a great second income for us. And it's what skyrocketed me to realize that I did want to be an entrepreneur. And so that business started to make an income that was the same as the, as the job that I had, the full-time job that I had to commute every day to get to, that I had to put my daughter in daycare so that I could go to work. And I realized, well, if I'm making the same income and I had already used that extra income, I'd saved it up that whole time to pay off those bills. I quit my job. I actually left because I ran out of vacation time um, because, <laughs> because the company that I was doing network marketing with um, does three vacations a year that you can earn. And I was earning all the vacations. So then I actually ran out of paid time off, um, which was truly <laughs> when I went to my boss to tell him I had to quit. That was why. But I, as I started to do that and I started to niche down within my network marketing to see who I was going to market to that's when I realized, well, I want to help parents with kids with special needs. So I thought, okay, well, the, the product that I was selling was health and wellness. Parents who have kids with special needs need better health and wellness in their lives. And so I started to niche down because of that. But what I found out was I don't want to just do this for them. I want to do so much more. And that's really like that merger is where a stronger mommy was born and how I really kind of found myself online. And I think there are so many people out there who have that excuse of like, 
I'm stuck at home with the kids so I can't earn money or my house is chaos so I couldn't do anything that would require me to be on the phone or I don't have time. I don't, I mean, there's, you, you have excuses, but you also have a way to solve your problem if you just took a step back and said, no, I'm going to be successful. And I will tell you this, the most amazingly successful people in this world did not have a perfect childhood, did not have a perfect upbringing, did not have the world handed to them on a silver platter. The most insanely successful people on this planet fought tooth and nail from places that you would never want to be and said, I am not going to let this be my life forever. I am going to change my life. I am going to change my future for myself, for my kids, for the generation. And then they did it. And so do you have excuses or are you ready to solve some problems? I get a little emotional and a little like forward because I, I'm just tired of the excuse makers. Ah, you, you preach, girl. I mean, there was about six mic drops in that. I don't make excuses. I create solutions. And, I, and, I'm, and I, I mean, as much as I wanted you to talk about Stronger Mommy, I really wanted you to talk about that because I know, I know I see you. Like, I, I mean, I'm not watching you, you know, through your window, but I see you online. I see what you're doing. She's always dropping videos. You know, she's always creating content to try to offer, not even try to, to offer solutions for those that need it. But we do, we live in a day and age in which individuals make excuses like constantly. And, you know, I came from, I came from poop or I came from shit. I can say it. It's my show. You know, I came from shit and I'm grateful for every single thing that happened for me in my childhood, in my adolescence, and even like, I'm beyond grateful for prison, right? Like everything that happened in my life, I'm grateful for because it built me into this unstoppable creature that I am today. And man, I mean, you just dropped so much in that I could go a thousand different directions. What would you say? I really want to, I really want to hit on the individuals that let's say they're working a nine to five, they have children at home. Maybe they don't even have children at home. Maybe they just have some habits which are taking up all of their time, whether that's video games or online shopping or, I mean, you name it, the list goes on and on and on. Like what is one direction that you could give maybe just one listener out there, although I know all of you are experiencing this, like what's one action that you could give them to just create a mental shift to get them headed in the direction that you're at? So I think we all look around the world and see other people who are better than we are in our minds. I could look at you, Mark, and be like, man, Mark is so successful. He's got, you know, I don't even know how many episodes of your podcast you have, and I'm still trying to like actually get mine launched, right? I've got them recorded, but I'm like, ooh, am I going to launch them? You know? So I'm like, I could look at you and say, oh my gosh, you've written two books and you pop out a book. Like it's no, like you just pop out a book. You're like, I think it was a couple months ago when you were like, yeah, I'm going to write another book. And then boom, here we are. It exists. And so I think what, (laughs) what happens is we look around the world and we see somebody else, whether it's in our state. I just mailed you. I just mailed you yours as well. I'm so excited to get it. (laughs) You know, we see somebody else and we think they must have something I don't have right? Because we don't know their backstory. We don't know the journey that they've been. You see somebody that, um, especially in the ClickFunnels community, if you guys are in the ClickFunnels community, it's an amazing community um, of online entrepreneurs that have taken a platform and been able to leverage it to very, you know, very quickly do a lot to create a great income for a lot of people. But what we see is the win, right? We don't see the 15 years of work that they did offline that brought their skill up to a level where they could finally come on and crush it, right? We only see the, I only see the mark that has two books, that has a successful podcast, that, you know, all of that. I don't see the time that you spent in prison. I don't see your childhood, right? Even, even if you put it out there, I didn't live through it with you. So to me, I'm like, oh, well, maybe prison isn't what I think it was for you because I, <laughs> it seems like you're so successful, right? That's, that's how we view the world. And so I think, You have to, it's kind of the same thing for parents. They always say like, don't compare yourself or your kid to somebody else. And it's hard to do that, right? It's easy to say hard to do, but I think that's the thing. I mean, I have a degree in theater arts, okay? Like I don't have some fancy business degree. I have a degree in theater arts, right? (laughs) Like I was a a low C student through high school and my parents never thought I was going to go to college. And then I just decided that I was, went in state and like did it all in two years to get it out of the way. That's just 
you know, I found me. You have to find you. You have an amazing skill that nobody else has that people want from you. It just might not be what you think. And it might be different than what other people have. And so we can't look around the world and compare ourselves. You have to look at yourself and say, what, what am I passionate about? What comes easy to me? What am I good at? And when you figure out what comes easy to you, like I'm not talking what could you learn that would be easy. I'm talking about like something where you just do it on autopilot, where it's like swimming downstream. It's just easy. If that comes easy to you, then look around and be like, is this easy to others? If the answer is no, it's easy to you and not easy to others, then find other people who want it to be easy and coach them. That's your superpower. And we all have that. And so stop comparing yourself to other people. Compare yourself to yourself. Take that introspective. Take a little time to say, who am I? What skill do I have that I can share with the world? And for drop the income for a minute and just think, God, if there was one thing that I could do with my life and it, it would pay all your bills, like don't worry about the money, but like that was the thing that you could do with your life. What would it be? Take that thing and make it your thing. Love every minute of your life. Love every minute of what you get to do and you will have success because you're so passionate about it. And that's what Mark's done here with, with Purpose Chasers and all of that is that he found something that he's passionate about and he said, okay, I'm going to, to make this something because it's my passion. And then you have success because you're so passionate, because you refuse to let it fail because you're so emotionally tied. And that's what Stronger Mommy is for me. It hasn't been an easy road. It's been two years of hell. And some great pieces that pop up, like little daisies that come through the concrete every now and then. But for me, it's that passion. And I, I've, I've decided that that's the road I'm going down. And so I'm not going to let a little rock in the road get in my way. I'm going to plow right through and keep going until it makes it, whether that's tomorrow or 10 years down the road. You have to find that for you. Bam. I, I bam. This is, I, this is me. If you can't, if you're not watching the video, I just pretend dropped my mic. So I want to close with this and I want to share with the Purpose Chasers audience and highlight on something that Chantel just shared. And what I want to say is the number one killer of hopes and dreams in my experience is what you define as success. In my experience of the word success and how individuals in our society define it, is you can't, most individuals cannot define success without comparing themselves to somebody else. Like success is, the ident- is, is defined in, 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 by your identification in somebody else. So, oh my God, when I do this, then I'll be successful. When I do this, then I'll be successful. You can't, when I do this, unless you've compared yourself. So my, you know, my I- idea of success is creating time freedom. That's my identification of success. It doesn't have dollar signs attached to it. Obviously, money makes the world go around. If money makes you uncomfortable, I would ask, I would challenge you to change your relationship to money. Money is a beautiful tool in which we in our society can use to empower individuals. Like it is the greatest resource that we have and it buys time. So, Chantel, I am so, so grateful for you coming on and really the first part of the interview was the setup for the second part of the interview in which I really wanted to get into with you. I could talk to you for hours and hours. Chantel, where can my audience go find you, especially those um, with children that have special needs, but also Chantel has created, I'm going to give her this plug as well. So she's created a course to educate individuals on how to build and monetize a Facebook community in which I've gone through. It is excellent. I still have access to it. I need to write her a new testimonial, but I'm doing it off of the Purpose Chasers community. So if you haven't joined the Purpose Chasers community on Facebook, you need to because there's some action takers in there and the community is actually coming off the ground again. It died for a while because I didn't do anything with it. But so I'm actually recording... Uh, my Take Action Tuesday episodes live in the Facebook community. I'm going to be doing some live coaching. So Chantel, where can individuals find Stronger Mommy? And also, where can they find what you're up to? So if you're looking to monetize a Facebook group, this, this is your woman. Yeah. So if you have a child with special needs, um, Stronger Mommy on Facebook. I have a Stronger Mommy business page, StrongerMommy.com. I'm all about the branding. Um, so pretty easy to find there. If you want to join 
our community of parents who have children with special needs, be aware that um, if you don't have a child with special needs, like I, I love you if you're a therapist, I love you if you have a mainstream child, but you won't be accepted into the group. So if you, if you have a child with special needs, um, our online Facebook community is Stronger Mommies, so plural, M-O-M-M-I-E-S. And you can just search that. You'll find it. Um, come and join us inside there. It's about 3,000 other parents who have kids with special needs. So much support. Just people that truly get what you're going through. Um, other than that, if you are looking to build that online community, if you're looking to do what I've done with Stronger Mommy for your own brand, build that tribe, um, elevate your, uh, your status, your expertise in a certain industry, get started. Even if you don't have a product to sell, you're not exactly sure, you know, who you want to sell to yet, or you're not sure what to sell. Creating your own community can be a great way to really actually like build up that client base build up those people that are going to tell you exactly what they need from you. And then you can go, okay, cool. Let me create that. So I do have something for you. Um, and so I do that through currently through, um, highly engaged Facebook groups, but the program itself is called the culture method. And it's all about finding the best strategies to build that cult following that culture within your brand, um, of people who just want to know, like, and trust you. And that's what we all need in our business. And so you go to, um, on Facebook, I'm Chantel Page Turner. Um, which is funny because I'm writing a book. So everybody likes to make the joke. That'll help you remember me. Paige Turner. Um, I know it's funny now you think about, it. yeah, you just laughed. <laughs> I get, literally, I get it all the time. People are like, oh, you're writing a book. You must, must be a real Paige Turner. So um, if you find me, Chantel Page Turner on Facebook, um, Chantel is with a C. You, um, you can look right there. The very first link will actually take you to a great ebook on how to build a highly engaged Facebook group. And then there is a course that actually goes through everything. Um, in fact, one of the, the people that just went through our course, he was able to get over 250 people into his group, like within the first week, he actually did have a product he was prepared to sell. So he, he did that strategically followed the, the course, the culture method exactly, um, and did over $12,000 in sales in the first week. So <laughs> it works really well. Um, and you can just find it through my Facebook profile is probably the easiest way to go through that path. And all of those links are in the show note description. So you go check that, click the links, check Chantel out. Chantel, so grateful to know you, to have you on the Purpose Issues podcast, to share your message with my audience. I'm going to ask you a question that I ask all of my guests. If you could leave one thing with the world, what would it be? Oh, I wish I'd had time to prepare. Um, this is why I don't give you time to I love prepare. it. If I could leave one thing with the world, it would be understanding. It would be an, an, the ability to open our minds and not judge somebody when you're not in their situation. Because I think all of us do it, right? We people watch, we judge, um, but you don't know behind the cover, what somebody else is going through. You don't know what they've been through. And so I think we just need to have a little bit more understanding in our lives and say, you know what, maybe I don't know. So the next time you see that parent with a child in the basket that looks too old to sit in the grocery cart, that's screaming or kicking or whatever, smile and just say, hey, you're doing a great job because that might be the only smile they got that day. That might be the only kind words they got that day. And if we all just had a little more understanding and kindness, I think this world would be a lot better place. Mm. Mm. Probably one of the best closers I've had. Thank you so much, Chantel. I look forward to continuing to know you. And for the Purpose Chasers audience, get out there and live life like it's your last because your dream should never be on hold. Chantel, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Purpose Chasers podcast. I want to encourage you to head over to my website, markcrandall.net, and download your free sneak peek of Embrace Your Past, Win Your Future. Also, if you receive benefit from this episode, please feel free to go to iTunes, throw me a five-star rating, and leave me a review. I appreciate you and look forward to seeing you on future episodes. Get out there and live life because your dreams should never be on hold.